exposed lake bed will release wind-blown contaminants containing selenium, arsenic, and pesticides. That's a toxic soup beneath and in the soil. As a mother of two children, that scares the heck out of me. You're already noticing dust in the air, huh? Living in it now. I wake up in the morning with sand. This is going to impact all of us within 100 miles of the basin. We're easily within range of these dust storms. It would make a lot of people sick. It would kill people. We cannot afford to let that happen. The Channel Islands, a small chain just off the coast of Southern California. These rugged and windswept islands are an oasis of biodiversity, containing plants and animals found nowhere else in the world. For millennia, the Channel Islands have served as nesting grounds for birds including the bald eagle, until it disappeared because of human predation and DDT contamination. It would take extraordinary innovation and collaboration by scientists, resource managers, and many others to bring the bald eagle back to this ancestral home. the right of the people of Los Angeles to use their own river. I believe it's underground. I know LA had a river, I just don't know where it is. The river runs 51 miles through the heart of Los Angeles County, and it drains major portions of all three of LA's mountain ranges. This river right here is the reason that Los Angeles exists. Our permits for accessing the river have been, for all practical purposes, denied. We need water. We need water. We tapped out the Owens, we tapped out Colorado. Get this, in one inch of rainfall, Los Angeles throws away 7.6 billion, with a B, gallons of water to the storm drains to the river. Bringing water to Los Angeles now is the single largest use of electricity in the entire state. Back in the 30s, the Army Corps did its job to control flooding, and we thank them for that. But we're in a whole new century now, and it's time to treat the river like a river again. We believe that the responsible use of marijuana by adults is no business of the government, and it should be legal and taxed like alcohol and tobacco products. Strategically speaking, we are obsessed with California. We believe that if you can flip California, you can flip America. If you flip America, you flip the world on cannabis. This is a story of how a sense of connection to place transformed a community, beginning with the children, beginning with a question. 
1992, I was teaching fourth grade, and I showed a video on endangered species and watched my students sink lower and lower in their seats until it was done. And then one boy raised his hand and he said, Mrs. Rogers, what can we do to help endangered species? It seemed like somebody's got to do something about it. I didn't sleep for two weeks after that day. So you want one tool in the hole at a time, right, guys? Who would guess that a fourth grader's innocent question would galvanize a community, empower children, inspire teachers, and help restore a watershed? all in an effort to save an obscure, endangered species. I do, but I don't like yours. For him, that he has a chance and opportunity to be somebody here. I want to prove to them that I'm changing my life. Repeat silently in your mind, I wish for myself to be happy. In 1861, Thomas Starr King, who was serving as pastor of the First Unitarian Church in San Francisco, went to the Yosemite and came back and he told his congregation, it's our goal as Californians to build up Yosemites of the soul. In other words, Yosemite as a natural environment stood for the more heightened society that Californians should create. 